Hello, Institute personnel, and welcome to our first Q&A session. Actually, some of you might be saying, isn't this technically the second Q&A? And yes, but this is the first in a regular series of such Q&As I'm hoping to do here on the Templin Archives. We got a lot of great questions both on Patreon and YouTube, and while we're giving priority to our YouTube members and patrons, that's not to say those will be the only questions we'll be answering. And I think I should probably start by just briefly going over the types of questions we won't be answering. The first is episode requests disguised as questions. So to those of you who asked some sort of variation of, have you ever considered doing an episode on X? Nice try, but no cigar. And in some cases, I've also rephrased the questions a bit just to give them a bit more context and make them more accessible. So if I rephrased your question, please don't be offended. There were also a number of questions regarding the lore of the Institute, which I find confusing. What lore? We're just a YouTube channel, there's nothing going on beyond that. But if you insist on believing such things, then maybe look deeper. Maybe there's something you've missed. Alright, but with that said, let's get into it. What motivated you to make this channel in the beginning? This seems like a good place to start. I actually have a background in film and new media. I went to school for both in uh, BC and Lethbridge. And I remember at the time kind of looking down on YouTube. I considered myself to be a quote unquote serious filmmaker and, and YouTube was seen as kind of beneath me. But I think in reality, I was actually just kind of scared that it was something I wanted to do, but I was worried that I wouldn't be able to find success there. I was playing the uh, I can't fail if I don't try card, but Eventually, I was just to the point where I had nothing really going on, and uh, I decided to give it a shot. So I brought on a narrator, we started the channel, and it kind of took off from there. I'm not sure if there was a single event that finally convinced me to kind of get over myself and just try. I know there was another channel that was doing something very similar to what the Templin Institute is doing now, and I remember thinking that I can do better. <laughs> I can bring something new to this, so that might have been it. I certainly never intended that it would become my full-time job, but I am exceedingly happy that it has and feel very grateful for that. How has the Templin Institute been recovering since you came back from your hiatus in 2020? Yeah, so the Templin Institute started off 2020 in a very rough spot. Our narrator at the time decided to quit, and this was just a couple months after I had put a huge amount of effort into uh, basically restarting the channel in a thing we called Operation Thundershark, so to put in all that work only to have it wiped out was uh, was a real blow. I was very concerned that the channel would not survive that. I was a fan of a group called Kinda Funny before I started the Temple Institute, and for those of you familiar with that situation, you'll remember that when they lost one of their founders, their community was devastated for, I don't know, two or three years, and it seemed to take them an immense amount of work to overcome that. So when I found myself in that same situation, I wasn't sure if I had the will to put in that same amount of work that I thought it would take to, to recover from that. As it turned out though, what happened to the Templin Institute was very different than what happened to Kinda Funny, and if I'd known how quickly we'd recover, I wouldn't have been anywhere as nervous about the whole thing. Our first month back was one of our best ever, and since then we've broken a ton of our own records for number of views and subscribers and all those things. I'm also very lucky that now the Templin Institute has a team that's dedicated and all working together to growing the channel. I was completely unaware of, of how much the, uh, the business and the channel were underperforming until we brought in people who knew what they were doing. Prior to 2020, I was putting in, you know, up to 100 hours and sometimes more every week and it felt like we were just crawling along. I had some big plans for the channel. I wanted to put out longer episodes. I wanted to put out more episodes in a week, including, you know, premiering five at a time, day by day. I wanted to become a Twitch partner, and it was, in retrospect, incredibly obvious that that was never going to happen. Fast forward a year later now, and we've been able to accomplish all those things, and I think the Temple Institute's putting out some of our best work yet. We're putting out more content more frequently, we're streaming longer, and I am working a fraction of the hours that I was forced to previously. How are you guys handling COVID-19? I like this question because it harkens back to that old meme, like everyone asks, what is the Temple Institute, but not how is the Temple Institute? So thank you for asking this. 
I'm lucky that uh, no one I immediately know has been affected by COVID too drastically. There's been a couple friends of mine who have uh, fallen ill with it, but thankfully they've all recovered. Obviously, the whole uh, quarantine situation is something I would have wanted to avoid, but it didn't really affect me as drastically as it has other people. I worked from home before this all started, so nothing really too much changed for me. At least on the work side of things, I miss seeing my friends and going up for chicken wings, hosting barbecues, board games, all that stuff. It was funny, my last few years at film school, I was living in a city where I didn't know anybody, I was doing remote freelance work, and I was basically, you know, quarantining back when it wasn't necessary. And right around the end of 2019, I thought that I had kind of finally gotten over that. Uh, I had a great social circle again. The Templin Institute was being invited to conventions across the world, so I got to do some traveling that I'd never got a chance to do before. And I remember thinking, wow, if 2019 is like this, I can only imagine what 2020 is going to be like. Well, turns out a lot worse, but looks like it's clearing up now, and I look forward to getting back to Atlanta for Dragon Con and Chicago and Europe and all these places I got the chance to see. What software do you use for your drawings slash animations? Do you use a mouse, stylus, tablet? So the software we use is predominantly from the Adobe Creative Suite. Uh, that's Premiere Pro for editing, After Effects for visual effects, Audition for sound editing, uh, Photoshop and Illustrator for all the uh, graphic stuff. I really like Adobe, even if it does break all the time and I'm constantly frustrated with it. If you're asking this because you're looking to get into video editing yourself or graphic design, both these things have become so accessible and the barrier to entry has gotten so low that it probably doesn't matter too much what software you're using as long as you're comfortable with it, so just use whatever works for you. As for the hardware side of things, I stick with a mouse. I am not artistic enough to get away with using a stylus and a tablet. The whole design of the Templin Institute is meant to be very industrial, so I don't actually have to draw anything or, or do anything too creative on my end. What alternate world or worlds do you wish had more accessible lore or just more lore in general? This is tough. I know there's plenty of episodes we've done where I've been editing or, or writing and thinking to myself, oh man, I wish there was more detail on this specific segment, but I never thought to write down what topics those were, so I can't actually remember. There's a bunch of games I grew up playing, uh, Supreme Commander, Total Annihilation, Freelancer, Battlefield 2142, these all have great bits of lore, but usually not enough to do a whole episode on, so I wish I wish those had more detail. Usually, though, it's not the lack of lore, but the lack of images that is the major problem. Even for something like Warhammer, there's so many great topics that are hard to cover because there's just no images for them. So, do you actually like the Soviet Union, or just the aesthetic? Yeah, so I first learned about the Soviet Union through Red Alert 2 which was not the most accurate representation. That evolved into a real passion I have for military history, especially that of the Eastern Front on World War II, which is often overlooked. Communism as an ideology is also very fascinating. So yeah, I do think I have an unironic love for the Soviet Union, but uh, maybe not the Soviet Union as it existed, but rather as it could have been. Dan Carlin, my favorite podcaster and now author, has the saying, uh, he wishes for an America that matches the marketing material. And I feel the same way about the Soviet Union. I wish it lived up to its own vision of itself, its own propaganda. After the great success of the conquest of the Bamp Springs Hotel, does the Templin Institute intend to travel to other places around the world? Yeah, so if you're confused by this question, previously we produced some videos very different from what we usually do. Vlogs uh, covering our travels first to PDXCon in 2019, and later this kind of goofy trip I did to the Bamp Springs Hotel. I was really happy to see the reception to those two videos, because they are very different from what we usually do. When the Templin Institute started getting invited to these conventions, they were fun to do, but it felt strange taking time away from creating content on Twitch or YouTube to do these events that only a very small percentage of our audience would ever get a chance to see. So with PDXCon, I put in a ton of extra work during that trip to document everything that happened and produce a vlog, so if you didn't get a chance to attend, you could still get a sense of what it was like. Obviously, not all our subscribers care about such things, but if you do, I wanted to make sure that the option was there for you. 
And it was cool because even though the number of views on that first vlog weren't extreme, it did catch the attention of Paradox Interactive and open us up to some more opportunities with them. Same with the Bamp Springs Hotel. We had this very unique and rare experience and to be able to record that and kind of find a way to incorporate the Templin Institute and raise the flag and show some behind the scenes stuff was uh, really cool and I'm glad people responded positively to it. So to get back to the actual question, yes, I would love to do more travel vlogs in that same style. I see Bamp Springs and PDXCon as tests for something that's hopefully going to become a regular occurrence here on the archives. We already got trips lined up for Star Wars Celebration, Star Trek Mission Chicago, Dragon Con, and my hope is that for all of those, we come out of it with a cool vlog that we can, uh, we can share here. Would you be open to providing a behind-the-scenes look at the writing and development of videos, and maybe even a grand tour of the Templin Institute's setup? Behind-the-scenes videos are, are something that's been on the, uh, the list of things you want to do for a very long time. The tricky part is, editing our regular episodes is already so much work that adding a behind-the-scenes look on top of that is a little too much for us to do right now. We have created some more minor behind-the-scenes looks at how we've created some of our artwork. Uh, those are already up on the channel. I'd really like to do a full breakdown on how we make our episodes, but uh, maybe not for a while. As for a grand tour of the setup, yeah, I've really wanted to do this as well. I'm a fan of, of setup tour videos, and I think... Uh, Templin East, as we call it, looks pretty damn cool. But I'm also not entirely happy with it right now. I want to get a little renovation done in my basement, and I don't want to do a setup tour before then. So hopefully, but not necessarily soon. Any chance to give Stellaris Invicta, or any similar series in the future, a bad ending? One where the nation at the center of the series is destroyed or falls apart from internal instability. Yeah, I think this is something that'd be very cool. The whole point of Stellaris Invicta is that we go where the game takes us, and if we lose the game, then yeah, that's the story. That said, though, I don't want to steer into losing, it has to happen naturally. One idea, though, that I'm not sure I'll do is that with every season of Stellaris Invicta, we increase the, uh, the difficulty, so by the end, we're basically guaranteed to lose. Are you planning on having more guest narrators for future videos like you did with Lee Shorten narrating your Kempatai episode? Yeah, this is a, a cool part of the Temple Institute. We had uh, Lee doing the Kempatai episode, we had Mark Mir doing a Mass Effect one, and rumor has it somebody showed up during our episode on the Necrons, but who can say? I'd certainly like to bring on more guest narrators in the future. But unless it comes together really quickly and we just happen to kind of fall into the right scheduling and all that, it can be a lot of effort to make these things happen, and it's hard to justify spending that much time when, you know, we got other episodes to make. So yeah, if it comes together quickly, we'll always go for it, but we're not going to go out of our way too much to track people down and bring them on board. Will you guys ever do a Q&A? Yes. Alright, so that's where we're going to end things for today. Thank you to everyone who submitted questions. If your question wasn't answered, there might have been a few reasons for that. There were some great questions that are better suited towards episodes of Incoming or Templin Dispatches. Things that I'd actually need to put some research into. But of course, the major thing is we don't want these videos to be an hour long, so there just wasn't enough space for every question that was submitted. But, you know, give it another shot, and we'll see if we can't fit them in next time. We'll be making posts where you can respond with your questions, both on YouTube community and on our Patreon, so keep an eye out. We're currently looking to do this about once a month. So thank you for all your questions, and until next time, this has been a Templin Q&A.